You might have noticed that I normally end up talking in these talks about something that goes bang. Today's no exception, I've got an artillery fuse. This is a number 106 fuse. Uh, and the requirement for this came about because the ones that came before it, the 100 series, which were developed and put in production in a little more than 10 days in 1914, had a few problems. They were quite unreliable. Um, they were mechanically complex and were not suited to mass production by factories that weren't used to working to small tolerances. So they were unreliable. Um, mostly that manifested itself as a dud, i.e. the thing just didn't go off. But occasionally, about 1 in 18,000, would be a premature detonation, which means the thing bursts in the bore of the gun, which is pretty devastating for the gunners and anybody else standing around, so clearly that wasn't satisfactory. Um, the other thing about them, because they're mechanically complex, is that there is an inherent delay even when they work perfectly, so they're really no good at all for things like cutting barbed wire. They bury themselves in the ground before they burst and leave the wire alone. So the requirement came for a fuse that was simpler to manufacture, mechanically simple, reliable, and if possible, as close as they could get to instantaneous. And this is what they came up with. Um, the principle of it is taken from a French design that's slightly older, but this in, is entirely novel in itself. And it really did what it said on the tin. Um, the rate of premature detonations went down from 1 in 18,000 to 18 months later after this had been introduced in the middle of 1916 to something like 1 in 317,000. So a radical difference. And it was also notably improved at the performance of cutting barbed wire. Um, so an excellent piece of kit, state of the art for its time, stayed in service for another 20 years. But none of that is why we're talking about this today. The interesting thing about this one, if we look at the date, it's quite late manufacture. It's made in December 1918. And it's part of that massive overstock of ordnance that was left after the cessation of hostilities. And it's an example of a manufacturer trying to repurpose things into other uses, in this case, in the souvenir trade. And if we take the transport cap off, we can see that this has been beautifully converted into a table lighter. This is not trench art. This is not a Tommy in a hole in the ground tapping away. This has been professionally done in a factory and it's a lovely piece of kit. They even went to the extent of printing a custom gift box for it just to dress it up. And I think that's lovely. So if anybody wants to know what I would like for Christmas, I'll have one of these, please. <laughs>